Tom, I, I want to ask about the commercial, the the famous Nike commercial, Chicks Dig the Long Ball. How how did that commercial even come about? It, it turned into and is still probably the most famous baseball commercial that has ever existed. You know, it's funny. Now, when we talked about the broadcast we all did uh, earlier in the show, um, that's one thing I probably did forget is, you know, we talked about that commercial during the broadcast, and and I think that was the first time I really realized how mad John was and is that he was not in that commercial. <laughs> um, and that certainly continues to be true to this day. But anyway, um, you know, it, it was one of those things that, look, I was a longtime Nike guy. Greg was a longtime Nike guy. And, you know, Nike was getting more and more into different things. And, um, and I remember my agent talking to me about maybe doing something. And I was like, yeah, sure. I mean, I'd be interested in doing it and or doing something and, and not knowing what. Um, so I think it was the kind of thing that honestly, my agent kind of prodded them a little bit and try to get them to do something and, and kind of kept putting a bug in their ear about trying to come up with something. So uh, when he called me and said, hey, you know, Nike wants to do a commercial uh, centered around, you know, the home run chase and you and doggy and whatever you interested. I was like, of course. Um, you know, I mean, everybody wants, you know, to have a commercial or something, right? I mean, you want to have those, those endorsements. So, yeah. uh, I was like, yeah, sure. Let's do it. I'll do it. Greg will do it. I'll do it. And so, you know, truth be told, you know, we did that commercial over, over a road trip and we did the first part, um, was in Philadelphia where you saw a lot of the batting practice mm -hmm. stuff and a lot of the Rocky theme stuff and things like that. And, uh, then the second half we did it in Florida, where there's a lot more of the skeet swinging at the skeets and you know the sauna scene mm -hmm. and all you know kind of all that stuff so i think as we're doing it in the second phase of it in florida greg and i are like what the hell are they doing with this? where are they going what is this you know what what is this gonna even be you know and, and i remember i remember i knew it was coming out and i walked into the clubhouse in atlanta in fulton county stadium in the old ballpark and i'm in the in the players lounge getting something to eat and the next thing you know, here it is, it comes on. And I'm just thinking, oh my God, I'm here. I'm trapped. I can't go anywhere. Everybody's watching this. I hope it's good. You know, <laughs> I said, I, said I, I had no idea. Um, and I have to say when it came on and it played, I was like, you know, internally, I was kind of like, that was pretty good, you know, and, and the reaction from guys was good. But I think over time, you know, it took on a life of its own. And, and I think largely because, you know, for people who know Greg and I, that was so out of our element. You know, I think for the fan base, you know, fans think they know you through watching you on TV right. and, and seeing you in interviews. So they think they know you, which to some extent, I guess they can get a sense for who you are and what you're about. And I think for people, too, it, it was the kind of thing that it was so uncharacteristic for Greg and I. Um, and I think that's what made it fun. And, and you know, it. it you know, it was it was funny. It was silly. It was funny, yeah. but it turned out to be a, a really good commercial.